Tita Springs, which I may refer to as BR2, uh, Live Oak Acres Levy, um, which I may refer to as VR3, and then Miners Oaks Levy, which has been talked about um, a little bit on this call already. Uh, so the purpose of um, work that we've been doing is really twofold. One is uh, to mitigate the increased flood risk from the Matilla Dam removal. Um, that really just includes looking at the sediment transport and hydraulics from the sediment that's going to be traveling through the system uh, subsequent to dam removal, but then also looking at uh, some of the scour that may happen, um, the long-term scour and local scour that may happen before uh, that dam comes out. And so what we've done is is uh, looked at some, developed some alternatives and um, come up with a comparison and then uh, evaluation and selection of those alternatives along with some some uh, cost estimates that are associated with each of those. And then the second part is um, bringing, bringing the levies into conformance with the FEMA National Flood Insurance Program requirements. So making sure that these these levies are can be certified by FEMA um, and reflected as the areas behind uh, the levies can be reflected as um, not in the 100-year flood, floodplain. All right, so um, on this slide is just a, a quick summary of the scope of services that we've um, either uh, started or are in the midst of performing. I won't go through each of these one by one, but uh, some, some of the items that we've covered on each of these systems is uh, the technical studies, which includes topo mapping and then the hydraulics and sediment transport, um, interior drainage and geotechnical analysis as well. And then taking that information and developing the alternatives analysis, um, which again I said was the, uh, you know, coming up with the comparison for each of these, and then the associated costs and the economics. In blue here, um, you'll see on the right hand side that the blue items are only uh, pertain to the Casita Springs levy. Uh, the Casita Springs levy is is a bit on a different time track than the Miners Oak and Live Oak Acres levies. Um, so for the technical studies, the interior drainage was performed, um, and the geotechnical investigation was performed for the Casitas levy, but has not yet been performed for the Miners Oak and Live Oak Acres levies. All right, and uh, on the right here, you'll see a, a big map. Um, at the top, we have uh, Matillaha Dam uh, noted at that at that point. And then just about two miles downstream, we have Miners Oaks Levee on the left bank, uh, highlighted in orange. That's protecting this this community here on the right side, um, of Miners Oaks. Um, and then further downstream, about four miles, uh, we have Live Oak Acres Levee. Um, this is on the right bank, and we have a few. We have a confluence, and then we also have uh, Santa Ana Bridge, uh, which Peter was was just talking about not too long ago. And then even further downstream, um, adjacent to Casitas Lake, we have uh, the Casitas Springs Levee VR2 um, on the left bank again. Each of these levees is about a mile long, give or take. Um, and I'll note that, as Peter mentioned earlier, uh, the Miners Oaks levees is not something that's currently in place. It, this is kind of like a, a bluff here currently. Um, so part of our development of the alternatives was not improving the levee, but um, some some ideas about constructing a new one. Okay, so starting with Casita Springs levy, on the map on the right, uh, you'll see a few different uh, lines, which all indicate alignments. Uh, the first I'll, I'll bring up is the black and um, brown line along this cur along my cursor here. This is actually the current existing levy alignment. Um, it extends and ties into Highway 33 at this point and then continues down along the river to tie in at Edison Hill. Um, and so this is the current existing alignment. Uh, as part of the alternatives analysis, we, we kind of considered a few different um, alternative alignments. And one of those is alignment B, which you'll see here in blue. Uh, the only difference between the existing alignment and this alignment B is is really just this uh, tie-in point at the upstream end. Uh, this this tie-in point 
we thought about this alignment that may cut through this property and tie in at Highway 33 um, a little bit earlier just because um, there's no habitable structures behind the levee uh, upstream of this point. And so this was uh, this was a thought to maybe um, save some money on, on the construction. And then also at the downstream end, uh, you'll see that the alignment B, the blue line, kind of deviates a little bit hard to see down here, but deviates from the existing alignment and um, ties into a, uh, a trail here. And so the thought here was that there might be some um, impact area savings from, from going into the river here um, and, and by setting this levee back a little bit. Um, so the alignment A and alignment B are alternatives that we are alignments that we have evaluated up to this point. Um, two alignments that are under evaluation currently um, are alignment C and alignment D, which is in yellow and in red. So alignment C, uh, it has the same time point as, as alignment B, but uh, what it does is it actually comes through instead of going back towards the river like alignment B does, it actually bisects this uh, mobile home property. And um, the county is in preliminary talks with the mobile home property property obviously this using this alignment for the levy would would uh, would take some relocation of the mobile home property and and some right away um, as the alignment C goes down it just bisects this um, this really just empty property uh, from the city of Ventura and um, then continues down and tapers to where alignment a and B are um, in this downstream reach. Um, uh, another alignment that's been up for consideration, um, which we're still evaluating, is, is alignment D. Uh, this is kind of the, the contingency plan if, if um, you know, if the mobile home park acquisition and relocation is, is not something that's feasible. Uh, another alignment uh, that that is going to be evaluated is, uh, you know, where it follows alignment B for this reach uh, upstream of the mobile home park and by the mobile home park, but then um, ties back and bisects this par property uh, that's owned by this city of Ventura. So that's that's a quick summary of the alignments. Um, I know kind of a lot going on, on here on the map, but um, just as a reminder, we only looked at and um, have evaluated up to this point alignment A and alignment B. But for each of those alignments, we have looked at a few different alternatives. Um, four different alternatives for for um, the system specifically, and so the first alternative being soil cement, um, a soil cement protection on on the riverward slope. Al alternative two was a uh, was a was a riprap blanket on the riverward slope, which is what is out there currently. Um, alternative three is a two to one grouted stone, thirty inch thick layer on the land, on the riverward slope. And then a uh, a grouted stone slope, but actually at a at a one and a half to one steeper slope. And um, we wanted to see what this would look like uh, if we could steepen this slope and uh, potentially get some some impact area savings. One thing that came up as we were considering this this alternative is that um, we had our geotech take a look at this, and to get the stability for the for the grouted stone in this reach, we had to uh, thicken the toe to an eight foot section. Uh, for the lower 12 feet and so that that was um, some increase uh, increase in impact area and also in, in cost <clears throat> uh, so to talk a little bit more about alignment c which um, some of this will apply to alignment d as well uh, but some of the pros in in looking at alignment c is uh, some reduced impact area in the river um, so by, by setting back the levee here uh, there's some vegetation and some um, active water in the channel um, against the levee here so um, setting back the levee would really just leave this this area untouched uh, in the river um, and then overall potentially just some uh, less mitigation may be required because we're we're not touching some of the vegetation in, in the river um, an additional uh, consideration is also the opportunity for a trail um, by setting back the levee gives an opportunity to have a little bit more space uh, on the riverward 
side of the levy, uh, particularly if this if the county can acquire this land from um, or right away from the city. Um, some of the concepts that have been discussed are adding an equestrian trail, um, a bike or ped trail, um, and, and some other betterments. Some of the difficulties with alignment C, uh, obviously the relocation of the mobile home park, um, and then the additional uh, right of way that would be required from, from the city of Ventura. Um, and all, another consideration for, for this alignment that is gonna bisect uh, this property is our, our toe protection on this system actually has to go down pretty deep. And so um, by, by uh, constructing a levee that has to go down deep in a fl particularly flat area, um, we might increase some of the earthwork costs with installing that toe down. Okay, so as mentioned, uh, these are the two alignments that we all uh, evaluated for each of the four alternatives. Um, and so on the, on the left-hand side, you'll see a table. Um, this 1A really just means um, alternative one, which is soil cement along alignment A. And then this, this is soil cement along uh, alignment B. And so, uh, and then so on for, for each of the four alternatives. And on the right, um, you'll see just a, a visual plot of um, what were two of the main factors in evaluating these, you know, what, what alternative might need to move forward or might be best to move forward. Uh, the two factors uh, were impact area and then estimated um, construction cost. And so, uh, this, what this plot shows is, is just a visual representation on the y-axis of uh, the impact area and then on this x-axis here, uh, the constructed cost. And so in this upper left area, we're getting in where uh, this would be the lowest cost, small, smallest impact area, um, which would be ideal. And then this bottom right corner, uh, this would be the highest cost and largest impact area. So <clears throat> as I've noted, um, we, we're still evaluating alignment C and alignment D as well. And so uh, there's going to be a few more bubbles um, on this chart before the county and can make an informed decision about which alternative will move forward. All right, and now going on to the Live Oak Acres levy. Uh, this is uh, maybe since the last time um, we've had this call, we've uh, submitted and finalized the uh, intermediate design basis of design and alternatives report uh, submitted and finalized back in uh, November, 2020. And for Live Oak Acres, a uh, similar graphic on the right, you can see a close up of the map here. Um, and on the left, we evaluated two alternatives uh, two of which actually were, were similar to uh, VR2 or Casita Springs. Uh, the first alternative was the uh, one and a half to one grouted stone layer, which with the thickened toe at the bottom there. And then for alternative two, just a two to one sloped uh, 30 inch thick grouted, grouted stone layer. And so the same same plot for Live Oak Acres Levy. Um, here you can kind of see the, uh, just comparing these two alternatives, um, it was pretty much a direct trade-off between impact area and cost. And so uh, this alternative one, um, a lower, lower, smaller impact area, but higher cost. And then alternative two, uh, a smaller cost, but a slightly larger impact area. And I'll, I'll note that um, this was this uh, alternative two is is what was uh, determined to be the alternative that moves forward in the design process. And then for the Miners Oaks levy, as I mentioned, this this uh, this system was kind of on track with the Live Oak Acres levy. So uh, that report, the basis of design and analysis uh, alternatives report, was uh, submitted and finalized in November 2020 as well. For the Miners Oaks levy, we uh, there were four alternatives that were considered. Uh, the first being the grouted stone at the one and a half to one um, thick and toe, 
The second alternative was the grouted stone uh, two to one, with the 30 inch uniform thickness. Uh, alternative three was a soil cement uh, revetment. And then alternative four was actually a soil cement protection with uh, the, that was working in conjunction with a flood wall. Um, you can see this cross section here. The soil cement was going to uh, tie into the footing of the flood wall and these two would act in conjunction as part of the levy system for protection. Um, one uh, consideration for the Miners Oaks levy, there, there is, like I mentioned, there is no levy here currently. Um, and so when we first did develop this alignment, uh, naturally we, we wanted to um, leave enough space for the river. Uh, so uh, when we first uh, developed this alignment, we had noted that there's a lot of uh, vegetation and trees that are adjacent to this property. And so what the county did and their environmental consultant and um, touch tech, we, we kind of put our heads together and we did some optimization um, of the alignment based off of the trees that were out there. So the environmental consultant did some uh, survey, found the number types and size of some of the trees that are in, around this area, both in the river and, um, and adjacent to these properties. And uh, based on that, we were able to um, shift the alignment by about 30 to 40 feet to preserve some of these trees um, on, the, on the land side of the levee here. And then for Miners Oaks, here's the same plot. Um, you'll notice uh, the spread is, is pretty spread out here, but um, based off of our preliminary analysis, <clears throat> the uh, soil cement presented um, in this upper left-hand corner uh, showed the best balance of, of smallest cost and also smallest impact area. And another consideration in this uh, Miners Oaks area is um, typically we have uh, revetment on the riverward slope, um, which usually means that for a levee prism, we'll have an earthen, um, an earthen slope on the land side. One consideration for the uh, Miners Oaks levee is the, reducing the need for herbicides or pesticides and allowing maybe for some natural shrubs and vegetation on the uh, land side slope. And so, um, a few landside improvements were considered. Uh, what we ended up moving forward with on the uh, on the land side is is continuing the soil cement that's on the riverside um, in the crown and continuing that down to tie into toe protection on the uh, <coughs> excuse me on the land side. So going forward, here's just a project schedule summary and um, kind of the next steps. So for, uh, as I've mentioned already, uh, Casita Springs uh, levy is still in progress. We're evaluating alignments uh, C and D. <clears throat> and then the Live Oak Acres and Miners Oaks, uh, the immediate, intermediate design is already complete for those. Uh, so we're looking to start, uh, finish off Casita Springs levy, start the next phase, which is final design, which will take the levy to uh, pretty much construction implementation. And that'll begin in the fall winter um, this year. And then the live oak acres should actually start a little sooner. This is anticipated to start off in uh, summer of this year. And then for miners oaks, um, I know there's some alternatives that are still, be, still being um, uh, evaluated. And also, <clears throat> also um, there are uh, the robust dam diversion a robust diversion dam wall, so uh, design wall, so dictate kind of what happens and how the levy will tie in at this location. All right, and I'll open it up for any questions.